Let me read from Luke 19. After telling his story, Jesus went on to, toward Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples. As he came to the towns of Bethphage and, and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead. Go into the village over there, he told them. As you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you untying that colt? Just say, the Lord needs it. So they went and found the colt, just as Jesus had said. And sure enough, as they were untying it, the owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And the disciples simply replied, the Lord needs it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. And when he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of the followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. Blessing to the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to the highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. He replied, If they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. But as he came closer to Jerusalem and saw the city ahead, he began to weep. How I wish today that you of all people would understand the way to peace. But now it is too late and peace is hidden from your eyes. Before long your enemies will build ramparts against your walls and encircle you and close in on you from every side. They will crush you into the ground and your children with you. For your enemies will not leave a single stone in place because you did not recognize it when God visited you. See, it all started with applause. It all started with applause. In 1918, Woodrow Wilson was a popular president. He brought the United States into World War I to, to end the war in Europe. It was destroying hundreds and thousands of lives. And Woodrow Wilson said, we need to be a part of this. This is the war to end all wars. We're going to stop it. And he came in and, and they had a peace. And he was a popular man. He would go into a town and he was more popular in Europe than many of the leaders in, in the countries like England and Italy. He was more popular than them. You know, some of the, the hospital workers would tell their, the, these kids, you know, there's no Christmas presents this year. Times are tough. And the kids didn't believe him because they said, no, 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 President Wilson is coming. Everything's going to be all right. And the cheering lasted about a year. About a year, and then it stopped. All the leaders in Europe, they started turning to their own interests, not making peace for Europe and the world. Even President Wilson in, in his own country, his party was defeated just soundly in the next election, and he was kind of powerless. And he even had a, a stroke in office, things that they don't tell you in the history books. And not long after he left office, he died a broken and defeated man. Sounds a little bit like what they did to our Jesus. You know, that three years ago, before Palm Sunday, Jesus is known by the people. He, he was a traveling preacher. He would go town to town preaching. He would talk about the good news. And, and one day he'd, he would just be talking with the, the drunkards and the whores. And the next day he'd be talking with the religious leaders. And everybody knew him. Or they heard about him. And when he came into Jerusalem that morning, they were waving the palm branches. They were saying, yeah, this is a great day. This is the one we've been waiting for. He's going to bring hope to us. And they put down their clothes, on their, their outer, like their coats, down on, the, on the, the road so he could walk over them. 
It's a sign of respect as in this is somebody important. They would say, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. This was important. So what, and why would people want Jesus? Why would they look in anticipation of Him coming? Because Jesus preached hope. He preached hope. For people who needed hope, He preached hope. And you might be thinking, well, didn't anybody else talk about hope? They did. Let me tell you about some of the other hopeful people. The Romans preached hope. They said, hey, your entire hope rests with us. Your life is lived for the glory of Rome and the emperor. And if you want any hope in this life, it's for Rome. Or else big men who like to break things and kill people are coming to your town. It's your only hope. They preached hope. Religious leaders, they preached hope. They would say, hey, God took us away from His land that He promised us because we didn't follow the rules. These Ten Commandments and all these other rules that Moses gave to the people, we didn't follow them anymore. So this is your hope. You need to follow the rules. The Ten Commandments and all the other laws that God gave to His people. But you know, we'll... We'll put a whole bunch of other rules in there as well so that we don't even come close to breaking those rules. And your only hope is to be good people and follow the rules. You know, people today preach hope, don't they? We, I'm surprised that nobody said, oh, of course. No, we're, we're entering a presidential election both sides, all sides are saying, you know what, this is important. I will bring you hope. Your only hope. You, what you need to do is vote me into office. We'll get the right people in positions of power. And what that happens, we'll pass the right laws. And gas prices will come down. And your 401k will rise in value. I am your only hope. It sounds familiar, doesn't it? People long for real hope. And that's the hope that Jesus preached. He said that all this other stuff, it, it, it's not by following the rules. It's not by following a certain politician. It's not by being part of an empire that preaches hope. No, that's not it. I'm your hope. And you know, most of us that think that we're not in God's plan, you know, it's not that. Jesus was saying, you know, you, you can be part of God's plan. You have hope because He loves you. He loves you. Those people that thought they were in, and Jesus would say, no, no, really, you don't get it. You're, you're not in God's plan. You're not in His kingdom. And those that thought they were out, he would say, no, 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 you are the ones that I came for. You're the ones that God says, oh, you're part of my kingdom. It's kind of audacious, isn't it? To say, I'm, I'm your hope. I'm your hope. And, and the applause, when he came into the, the, the Jerusalem that time, it was thunderous. But the applause didn't last very long. It, Holy Week is a, a week between two parades. And because Palm Sunday is a parade. And there's lots of applause. And why did it stop? Why did it stop? There was a professional baseball player who was, who was, he was asked this question, what is it like to be the hero of so many young people? Now people look to you, you're the star of the team. And he kind of put it into perspective. It was, let me tell you about this one game that made it clear in my head. I was three for four that day. I, first off, I hit this home run. Oh, there was loud screaming. Yeah. Next up, I hit this double right into the gap. I'm on second base. 
My next at bat, third up, I hit this home run way to center field. And then in the ninth inning, when everything's on the line, I struck out. And the entire stadium booed. How quickly the applause switches. When our, our expectations, our, our hopes get dashed to pieces. Because Jesus didn't live up to expectations. Jesus was not the hope that they were looking for. And this is what Jesus was supposed to be. He was supposed to be like a conquering king. He's supposed to kick these Romans out. We're being oppressed by these guys. They won't let us worship as we'd like to. They're, they're in everything. They, they want taxes all the time to send to Rome. But th th we're oppressed here. We want them out. And Jesus is supposed to come in and kick these guys out. Like a conquering king. There were some Roman generals that they came into to Rome and, and their parade lasted three days bringing in riches from the conquered country that they, they conquered. They'd come in with slaves and the, the king would come in and then they would come in on this big horse or this huge chariot like I am in charge. I'm a conquering king. And that's what they wanted from Jesus. Come on into town, Jesus. You're our hope to kick these guys out, set everything right. And he comes in on a donkey. He comes in on a donkey saying, I bring peace. That, what, that, that's not who we're looking for. Jesus didn't, he didn't measure up to the expectations. And we think, like, couldn't they just see that this is Jesus? Are these, are these people insane that they didn't see the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, when He comes into town? We would have, wouldn't have we? We would have seen that that was Jesus. These people. There was somebody that, that said a long time ago, if Jesus came back to our world today, we would still crucify Him. Because he doesn't meet our expectations for hope. He doesn't. He's like, wait a minute, I have a whole different idea of hope. Either we would totally ignore him and call him a crackpot, a, a fool, or we would crucify him ourselves. Because Jesus would come and he would point the finger at every one of us, saying, why are you, why are you so interested in a political party being your only hope. He would point the finger at both of them, these ravenous, rabid political parties, and how we easily get sucked into either side. He would look at us and say, why are you not embracing people who live in spiritual darkness? Instead of like yelling at them, or verbally, all caps, typing at them. You're not loving them. They need the light that you have. Yet we're not loving them that way. He would look at us and say, you know, God's people need to know me personally. Can you show other people who I am? You know, we would feel that rebuke, I'm sure. He would tell us, oh no, I got people that you need to forgive. No, oh, wait a minute. Jesus, huh? That's a step too far because you don't know what this person did to me. I can't forgive them. No, no, no. I want you to forgive them. I'm sure that Jesus would come and He'd say, no, no, no. I don't want your type of hope. I want you to make our, our country pure again. Bring back the good old days when people, the churches were full. And people looked after you. We had laws that were wholesome and moral or whatever we have to say. And he would say, wait a minute. Your only hope is me at the very center of every part of your life. That is your only hope. That I am the very center. Like the sun is the center of our solar system. And all the planets go around it. Everything goes around the sun. And all the life 
The heat in our universe comes from the sun. Without it, we're not going to last here. Our only hope is with Jesus, the very center. And everything in our lives that revolves in our world that we think is important and things that we don't think are important, they all matter and they need to revolve around Jesus. That is your only hope. You know, I've said this before, and you might get sick of me saying this. We don't have a racism problem here. We don't have a hunger problem in Muskegon. We don't have an educational problem. We don't have a homeless problem. We have a spiritual problem at the very core. And all these other things are symptoms. Because Jesus is not the center. All these other things, they're they're huge problems. They're the ones that cause us much anger and angst and anxiety. But they all are spiritual first. And we don't see that. That Jesus is not the center of our lives or our, our culture or our society, our country even. Jesus said, I want to be your king the very center of your universe. I want to usher in the kingdom of God. I want to bring it on earth as it already is in heaven. I want to be the center of your homes, of your schools. I want to be the center of your marketplace, your your entertainment. I want to be the center of your home, your employment, even your churches. Even our churches. Jesus calls us to make Him our King. The Supreme Ruler. He came to save souls first and foremost. And change every part of our world so that He is the center. He says, I want to be King of your life. And we instantly go, well, wait a minute, Jesus. I, I love this idea that you're the King. I love, that's kind of fun. I think you'd be a great king. I th- really do. I, 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 I love the idea. But I want to be the king of certain areas. I don't want you to be all of it. You know, I got some areas. I want to be the king. Can you just like leave this one alone? He says, no, I've come to be the king of entire lives that everything revolves around me. And he came on Palm Sunday to say, you need to decide this. Am I the king, the center of your universe? And it was, for some of us, he would say, you're like unsatisfying, lukewarm, room temperature water. You're not good for tea or coffee. Certainly not good for soup. On a hot day, you don't want lukewarm water. You're not refreshing. I want you to be one side or the other, please. Either you're going to walk away from me, but I hope that you say, I will make you the king of my world, of everything of me. You know, the, G- the Bible talks about how Jesus, how they reported how Jesus cried twice in his life. Not like the nursery rhyme that you no know, crying he makes. You know, not that one. He cried when his good friend died. And he's mourning with his good friends who had just lost a brother and a good friend. And it, Jesus wept. It didn't say, oh, he just sobbed a little bit, tears ran down. He wept. As in sorrowful, from the bottom of his heart, it was like, this is not how it's supposed to be. And the other time the Bible records that Jesus cried is this time. Because he comes into Jerusalem and he knows the people are going to reject him. I bring hope. I am your hope. See me as your hope and they will not. Because the applause stops. Not right away. The applause didn't just all of a sudden stop. It tapers off. And within five days, 
Jesus is nailed to a cross. There was a young boy that was at bat. He was playing peewee baseball. And, and, and they, they have all these signals. I, I can't do them all. They're twisting your arms like that. The coach is going, yeah, this is your answer. Some of you guys know them, I guess. Um, but the coach is saying, hey, I want you to bunt. The guy says, gotcha. And he gets up there, and he takes three big swings, and he strikes out. And the coach goes, hey, come on over here. We've got to talk. Hey, did you see I was having you... I wanted you to bunt. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw your signal there. I just, I just didn't think you were serious about that. And Jesus comes to town. He says, hey, I want to be your king. I am your only hope. I will make everything right between you and God. And everything in your world, I want to be the center of that. And so often we just say, oh, are you serious about that? Are you serious, Jesus? You know, I, I realize it's Palm Sunday, but are you serious? You want to be the center? Jesus is serious that he is our only hope. And he says, would you decide? I want you to decide. I read this story this week. It was about the 1976 Olympics that was in Seattle, Washington. And it wasn't the, the, the Olympics like this is going to be in Paris this summer. It was the Special Olympics. And if you've ever seen video of the Special Olympics, it's amazing. It is just so much fun. These guys are just, they're so much fun. Here, I'll give you the idea. There was the 100-meter dash. We don't call it dash anymore. A race. 100-meter race. And they line up these nine contestants, these runners. And they don't get in the blocks because yeah, I don't do blocks. I'm just, I'm just really good. I'm running. And all of these special needs kids are lined up. These nine. And they're ready to go. And they're ready. This one girl took three steps and just dropped face planted it was like oh my goodness hopefully she gets up and keeps running the, the the person next to her took a step and goes oh she fell and she's she's whatever race was going on no that just went out the window i gotta help my friend here and she says oh, are you all right and just starts dusting her off a little bit and then a couple of the other ones they went up a ways and they look back like where is everybody else and they're back here so they they turn around and they come back and they're helping this girl up and then they all linked arms and they ran to the finish line and there wasn't just one winner that day there was nine winners in the 100 meter race. I get the idea that the, the focus of us is only about this competition. And the idea that Jesus says, wait a minute, life is not a competition. Your ideas are 180 degrees backwards. Your whole idea of hope is 180 degrees backwards on how it's supposed to be. And Jesus was saying stuff like, what does it profit a person to gain the whole world, but forfeit their soul. I'm your only hope. And Jesus was saying stuff like, hey, who's the most important person in the world? Let me grab a little baby here and just bring him up here. This is somebody who is totally dependent. Like, utterly dependent. They would die without the parents. That person who is totally dependent on God alone. That's the most important person. And I am here to help you with that. I am your only hope. Jesus was saying stuff like, I am the way, the way, the truth, the life. You have no hope besides me. Jesus came on Palm Sunday and said, I am your only hope. Will you please decide? Embrace me as your only hope. So I ask you, it's Palm Sunday. 
Fix your eyes on Jesus, our only hope in this life and the next. Let me pray with you. God, you are our hope in a hopeless world. Let people see you as our only hope in this world and the next. When they see our lives, may they see you and the hope that you bring us. Show your power to us this week so that the world may know that you have come to save. You are our hope. We praise your name. Amen.